How's it going, everyone? My name is George, and today we are continuing the Halloween slash horror series of reviews with the original Scream from 1996, directed by Wes Craven, who is known for directing A Nightmare on Elm Street back in the 1980s. And this film stars Neff Campbell, David Arquette, Courtney Cox, Jamie Kennedy, Ski Ulrich, Matthew Lillard, and Rose McGowan, as well as appearances from Henry Winkler and Drew Barrymore. In this slasher film that touches upon the cliches of horror, as well as tell a new slasher story. So basically, in the town of Wo Woodsboro, this new killer called Ghostface is terrorizing high school students. And this is all happening around the time of Sidney Prescott's mom's death, first year anniversary happening. And we find out how the Ghostface killings are tied to, to that. And this is a film that came out at a time where it felt like the slasher genre was on the decline and one of the things i love about scream is just like how it touches upon the cliches of horror uh, for example this one character randy played by jamie kennedy talk talks upon the cliches of horror how do you survive a horror film what not to do in a horror film and just like how self-aware they are of the, of these things and the conversations that these characters have about the horror genre about my things like Michael Myers, Jason, the Halloween films, the Friday the Thirteenth films. Like I love movies that that are self aware, but Scream also tells a new kind of slasher story, and it has a great balance of having very dark moments because this is a very bloody film with some very gruesome deaths, as well as tell a humorous horror story because there are some very funny and enjoyable moments in this film but right from the beginning of this film ghostface is established very well now ghostface is probably my favorite of the slasher slash horror bad guys because ghostface can be anyone with like michael myers and jason it feels like they've been immortalized while ghostface it feels like in all these screen movies there's a new killer with a new set of motivations and sometimes in the film, particularly this film, it's more than one killer. It's a, it can be like a group of people or a duo. And we'll talk about that more as we get on with this review. But right from the beginning, uh, Drew Barrymore's character, Casey Becker, she's making popcorn. She's getting ready to watch a movie. She gets this mysterious phone call from a creepy but calm voice. But as the phone call goes on, the voice becomes more sadistic and you find out that this mysterious caller has Casey's boyfriend held hostage and he's going to kill Casey and the boyfriend if she doesn't answer questions correctly. And we have this really scary chase scene where like we find Ghostface, he's chasing Casey. Uh, smoke is around the house because the popcorn's on fire. It's just a great way to set up our eventual killer, our bad guy of this film. And the cast overall in this film, to me, Scream probably has the best slasher cast of any of these slasher films. Now, I love Halloween. I love A Nightmare on Elm Street. But I just feel like the actors in this film gave much better performances. And yeah, I feel like a lot of these actors in the Scream movies compared to the actors in the other films had more successful careers, like moved on to other things after the Scream movies. But... Just like the performances in this film, like Nev Campbell as Sydney Prescott, she was the scream queen of the late 90s. And she did a phenomenal job in this role. But one of the things I love about Sydney Prescott is like, she, like she's a character that like we we learn so much about. And yeah, like she's being being chased by this ghost face killer, but she's also someone that will fight back against Ghostface. And we see that later on in the third act. Uh David Arquette as Deputy Dewey, very funny, witty character. You have Courtney Cox playing Gail Weathers, this ambitious reporter that Sydney holds a grudge against because of how she covered her mom's death the previous year. Uh, Rose McGowan as Tatum, uh, Dewey's sister, and Sydney Prescott's best friend, great as well. Jamie Kennedy as Randy, funny. I just love how, like, I feel like most of the viewers of Scream, the majority of fans of Scream, like, if they're going to resonate with one character in this film, it's probably going to be Randy. Uh, but again, besides Neff Campbell as Sidney Prescott, 
probably the other two best performances of this film come from Ski Ulrich and Matthew Lillard as Billy Loomis and Stu. Like, Matthew Lillard, like, we all know Matthew Lillard for playing Shaggy in the live-action Scooby-Doo movies of the early 2000s, and now he's also the voice of Shaggy in the Scooby-Doo cartoons of the late decade. But before that, he was known as being Stu in Scream, and he was phenomenal in this film. And Ski Ulrich as Billy, also phenomenal. And the mystery aspect of Scream, to me, is probably the best thing about this film and why I love this film so much. And why I also like the sequels to Scream. Because, yeah, like the Scream sequels are nowhere near as good as the first Scream, but the mystery aspect in each of these Scream films, the fact that there's like a new killer, a new set of motivations, is why like I enjoy the Scream sequels as well, even Scream 3, which isn't all that good of a movie. But yeah, the mystery aspect of the first Scream film. So at first we suspect it could be Billy because, because in this the, the first time Sydney encounters Ghostface, right after like Ghostface like leap leaves, Billy Loomis just climbs out of the window and out drops his phone. And so we suspect, oh, it could be Billy. All the characters suspect it's Billy, but then they, they trace the calls on his phone and there's no connection. So then the father's made a suspect, Sidney Prescott's father, because he went on a, he goes on a business trip right around all this stuff is happening, and you find out he's he, he never went to the hotel. And then like during Stu's party, where like after Stu's party, all the all the things go down, uh, his car is is not that far from Stu's house. And then we find and then Billy, like we kind of still suspect Billy could could be tied into all this because there's this one brilliant scene. In the film, probably my favorite scene in the Scream franchise, where at the video store Randy works at, uh, he, him and Stu are talking about possible suspects. So Randy still thinks it's Billy. Stu thinks it's the father. And then like Billy comes around and he suspects Randy. And Randy's in between Stu and Billy. And at first we don't really know what this could mean, but later on in the film, like we we know we later put two and two together, and this is a real good thing of symbolism right here how randy's in between Stu and billy and the reason why is because when ghostface is striking closer to the end of the film we no longer suspect it's billy because ghostface stabs billy but then billy survives and then we find out wait bill wait not only is billy the killer it's also Stu. And these two have been working together. So in the video store, Randy is caught in between between the two culprits. And we later learn the set of motivations for these characters. And just how crazy these two guys are. And how Ski Ulrich and, and Matthew Lillard pull off playing these crazy high schoolers is brilliant. And we and then we touch upon like how why, how the father is a suspect they plan on framing Sidney Prescott's father they kidnap Sidney's father and just like how like this the mystery aspect of the film works like even though i've seen scream so many times i just love the mi mystery aspect of this film film it always intrigues me even though i know what's going to happen but like the symbolism that Wes Craven uses in this film the hints that he drops about what's to come. He pulls it off so well. Overall, I love Scream. I enjoy the characters. I enjoy the mystery. Uh, Ghostface, to me, like I said, because Ghostface has motivations. He's Even though this is a fictional film, I feel like he's the most realistic of any of these horror film slasher killers. Um, the the humor, as well as the dark moments, they, they're pulled off so perfectly. Overall, I'm going to give Scream 1996 an A+. I highly recommend you check this film out. And it's also a film that I can watch at any point in the year. Like, I prefer watching Halloween and Nightmare on Elm Street around Halloween. I can watch Scream any time of the year. But, yeah, what are your thoughts on Scream? Did you love it? Did you hate it? And what's your favorite slasher film? Mine is obviously Scream 1996. Let me know in the comments down below. And I want to thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe already if you haven't. Please share this with someone that loves to scream films. And I'll see you guys real soon. Take care, everyone.